Hey everyone, welcome to Need It Make It. In this video, I'd like to address a problem with cleanup on this metal lathe. And as you can see, it's a very open style, very old lathe. I don't really want to modify it by adding any covers. So what I'd like to do is address the problem uh, with the cleanup itself. So I'm used to using a shop vac hose like this, which does not do a great job of getting into the T-slot, especially if there's any oil being used, getting in where the screw is or with the dovetail slot. So today, we're going to create our own part, which is going to be designed and 3D printed, assembled and tested in this video, so stick around. So what I had in mind uh, was to adapt something. So I've got these two shop vacs here. This one here is uh, 20 years old, and this one's only a few years old. And uh, this one's got the smaller hose, and this one has the regular 2-inch uh, diameter hose inside. So I'd like to adapt something that will go on to the end there that will really get a nice small tip on it. So this is three quarter uh, copper pipe inside diameter and uh, half inch copper pipe might work okay as well. Um, but what I'd like to do is compress one end down so that it gets down quite uh, small in thickness and you can really get in those kind of tight areas. So you might ask, okay, why wouldn't you just 3D print the entire part. What's wrong with that? Uh, well, if you're a woodworker and you uh, you know about grain structure of wood, you'll know that it's weak in some directions and not in others. And the same kind of goes for a 3D print, at least this type of 3D printing, uh, which is layered. So um, what it has is these kind of grain lines, each layer, and the layer bonding is not as strong as the continuous um, laying of filament that it's putting down. So each layer and how it bonds together can actually crack if there's enough pressure on that. So what I want to do is try and avoid that by giving the majority of it, the beefy part of it, a 3D print and giving the small portion of it that's going to get into those nooks and crannies, use the copper pipe for that. And one other little benefit of using the copper pipe is that it won't wear down quite as fast as the plastic does. And you can see this one here that I drag along the floor all the time just about use it for everything. It's pretty worn down. So you'll have to replace these over time. My idea is to make it so that I really don't need to replace it pretty much ever. I'm just going to do a quick sketch here and I kind of go over uh, what generally I'm looking for and then we'll get into the 3D design because I think this is going to be a great opportunity for you to see the entire process of design by sketch, 3D uh, design, and then 3D printing and then use. So um, hopefully you stick around for the entire video. If not, there will be timestamps down below in the description. And if you just want to jump to those different sections you're interested in, uh, then you can get right to what you're looking for. So here is the concept, and I've already done an adapter for a hose, and it looks something like this. So the large hose will go over top of this end, which is slightly tapered, and the small hose will go inside there. So that is the end. Now I wanted a small angle, not much, just to kind of redirect the airflow a little bit and make it a little bit easier because the shop vac is near the floor and uh, what I'm going to be vacuuming is probably at a little bit different height and I don't want to be holding a shop vac hose up on, a, on an angle. Uh, the angle is built right into it. Now you could also just bend the copper pipe as well. So a gradual taper and then at the end the copper pipe will fit in and will be compressed at the very end to whatever shape it is that you're looking for. So a few more measurements here before we get started into the 3D design. So I have to take this uh, measurement for the outside diameter. That is critical. So I'm switching to metric because I design in metric. It's a little over 22 millimeter, 22.25, which is about 7 eighths of an inch. Um, so that is very important because we want a snug fit, not too tight. You want to be able to push this in and maybe take it out occasionally. Um, you don't want it just falling out on its own and I don't want to have to wrap any tape around this to make it work. Okay guys, let's get to it. So just a couple basics here. Uh, I'd like to design a metric and you do that. You modify the preferences. Took me a while to find this. And it's over on the side here. Design, default units, millimeters. So if you design in millimeters, you're going to be able to import directly into 3D print software and not have to scale anything. Okay. So no named file. Create sketch. 
front face. And I've added this command. This is handy. Uh, any of these commands you can add, they either have a letter associated with them, quick uh, command, or you can pin them over here. So we're going to draw a circle with a diameter of 51.5. And this is uh, the command for dimensioning is D, 51.5 millimeters. And E for extrude. I'm going to extrude this for 30 millimeters. You see over here, 30 millimeters. So we are going to now create a plane at an angle. And the angle I want to choose is 35, negative 35 degrees. Okay. Now we're going to choose another plane, a regular plane. And offset that, I'm just going to choose a number, 60 millimeters. Negative 60, sorry. Okay. And we'll create a sketch. All right, so I'm missing my center point, and I really need these things to align. So here I have the project command. Project that face. And now they align correctly. We draw a circle. All right, so here it's important to size this correctly. So it's gonna be 22.25 plus the wall thickness, six millimeters. Uh, that's three millimeters for each side. And then minus the wall thickness of the copper pipe, two millimeters, uh, one millimeter per side of the, the wall. All right, 26.25. And we will then extrude that for let's say 16 millimeters, five eighths of an inch. Okay, good basic uh, shape here. So now what we need to do is we need to connect the two together, of course. So here is the, this is called the loft command. And what it's gonna do is create a shape that follows the, um, the original diameter and meets the smaller diameter as well. So it's changing shape constantly, but there's more that you can do with this. You can create a shape that follows a path. And that's what we want to do because the shape that you just saw there has some sharp edges on the inside of it. I'm not too happy with that. I would really like it to have a much more flowing contour, which will direct the airflow. All right. So we create a sketch, this plane, and this is just kind of free form, but I think it's important to have the end lines die in at 90 degrees. I'll project this. And you can trim these with the T command. All right, so that's pretty good. You can, you can modify this as needed. Um, you know, this isn't going to work with this square transition. So we want to create a fillet, control F. It's my setting. And I think we're going to go with 30 millimeters, a nice flow. And down here, the same thing. So we want to go with something like 10, maybe 25, 25 millimeters. Looks good. Okay. So let's, let's try the loft command again, except this time we're going to use the center line over here. All right. So that's pretty good. Um, there's a little area here that's not too fancy. It probably isn't going to be a big deal for this particular part. So I'll come back and I'll tweak that later. So the next step here is to haul this out. But before we do that, I'm kind of being bugged by this little area here. So I'm going to take the fill it command and type in a number 50 millimeters to kind of smooth that transition out a little bit and make it flow just a little bit nicer. Okay, shell, you select the two ends you'd like to be open, and you select the wall thickness. This is going to go towards the inside. So that's our shape. Very good. Now let's add the taper on the end. So we're going to create a sketch, create a circle, with a diameter of 53 millimeters, this is a dimension that I've used from before. 
case you're wondering where I'm getting these from. And solid, extrude these two shapes for a distance of minus 25 millimeters and 0.5 degrees. So here you can cut into the shape existing or you can join it to the shape. In this case, we'd like to join it to the shape. And you can see how it has raised up this area here, but it remains consistent over at this side. So if I measure the diameter here, 53. If I measure the diameter at this end, 53.436. Very minor difference, but enough so that it uh, causes the hose to tighten up as it goes on. All right, so that's good. Let's move on to this end. We need to create a sketch. So what we're looking for dimensioning. We are looking for the outer diameter of that pipe, 22.25. And I'd like a stopping point in there. So I'm going to extrude. I'm going to cut in, in this case, minus, let's say, 13 millimeters. Minus 13 millimeters. Let's see what it comes up with. So because of this uh, fancy shape on the top and it's following this contour as well, it is not an even reveal, but that's not a huge deal. I'm looking for it mostly to be flush on the inside, and this is going to achieve that goal. So that looks good. The copper pipe will fit into this area. Okay, so the next step is uh, we don't want to have that full copper pipe in contact with this area. So what I'd like to do is create a sketch, and I will run you through this real quick. Now I have to admit, this is the second time I'm designing this, so you're going to see a little bit better version here than what was 3D printed. So what I'm going to do is radius these corners here. That will provide a little bit better finish. Rather than a hard stop, hard transition point, it'll be a nice flow and it should provide a much better 3D printed uh, final product as well. Let's take a look at this part and how it's going to 3D print. So you have to be concerned with the overhangs. I don't want to print with supports. So is this part printable as is uh, on my 3D printer? And I believe that it is, but just barely because of these angles right in here. This is getting about to the maximum of my printing capacity. So the other thing we want to take a look at is the uh, how it's going to connect to the base plate, build plate rather on the 3D printer. And um, a circle generally is going to be a very, very strong shape that's not going to warp while you're printing. If you have square edges, however, printing with ABS, uh, you may have problems with the edges lifting up and peeling away from the build plate. So I like to, whenever I can, use something with circular or radius corners, and that helps to prevent the raising up of those edges. So we're just about done. Let's just add a few chamfers here, make it look pretty, and also they form a function of guiding on this um, this particular case on this end. So because we're having a hard time seeing inside of this part, it would be really handy to see uh, you know how it looks from the inside and we can kind of analyze it, how it's going to 3D print. You can simply go section analysis. You pick the plane you would like to section. And now you can have a look at what's going on. So this is the area in here that my 3D printer may struggle with. So I am going to refine this a little bit and make it so that I'm confident it can print with no issues. You can see up here the wall thickness gets fairly small, fairly thin. Uh, a little bit of a concern up here. So when you're happy with it, you can turn off the analysis, save your part. I'm going to call it the MCTT. Let's call it that too. And done. So let me open the one I had done previously. We'll take it from there. All right, we need to get onto the 3D printing. So tools, make, 3D print, select your part. And if this box is checked already, then uncheck it and go OK. You find your save location, MCTT V3, just for example. And now you have a file that can be 3D printed. So I use Cura 
for my software, 3D printing software. And there are some settings here that work fairly well for my printer under the Perusa settings. I print with ABS. And all of these settings here are really, uh, they need to be modified depending on your printer and the material you're printing, etc. So this takes quite a while to set up just the way you want it. Uh, it also does depend on the part that you're printing. So file, open file, MCTT, and it comes in, looks like that. It looks pretty good. If you uh, design this in Imperial in inches, then you would find that you would need to scale it to 2540, and that would bring it up to the correct size. All right, so move it where you want it on your build plate, and I like to rotate mine to see the side profile. As it's printing. Good. So just one more thing to go over. The reason I designed without support is because when I slice without support, two hours and 35 minutes, 46 grams of filament. With support, three hours, 27 minutes, 62 grams of filament. So both an increased amount of time and quite a bit of increased amount of material required to print this part with supports. Uh, one other side benefit of printing with supports is the final finish of the part tends to be a little bit nicer uh, directly in contact with those supports. So this all has to be peeled off as well. You're going to save yourself a bit of time too. You can't always print without, without supports depending on the part that you're making, uh, but I definitely try and consider that when I'm designing it. All right, turn off support. And on the sidebar, you have the ability to go layer by layer to make sure that you are going to get what you're expecting. Okay, so uh, last step, save to removable drive. My uh, 3D printer takes a micro SD card. So save to micro SD card, and that will transport over and plug into the printer. So it is as simple as taking this little micro SD card plug it in. Now I have this just used uh, regular packing tape on the base plate here. Now since I know where I'm going to place my part, it's going to be around this area. Um, and by the way, this this here, this can be easily removed. Just heat up the build plate and take off the packing tape. If you do use packing tape, just make sure you use the heavy duty one. Uh, the other stuff just doesn't last. It will just peel apart. So a couple layers of, you know, children's glue stick. Okay, so I have a case around this, and uh, it's important for this material, for ABS, to have something like this to contain uh, the heat, because ABS, when you're printing, is very sensitive to temperature changes, and you'll get a lot of warping, and you get um, it raising off of the build plate as well. So you need to have a case for ABS or some other way of sealing in that temperature. So the printer nozzle temperature, uh, the little heater there, is at the maximum temperature. So I can go ahead and remove the existing roll. And to prepare for the reinsertion, just clip the end on a slight angle and then straighten the end a little bit. Sometimes it snaps off, but straighten the end. I find that works a little bit easier. There's a little hole in the back here and you should see a little bit of filament coming out the bottom. So now it's just a matter of loading the part. So it will start printing when it reaches this 98 degrees Celsius temperature. Okay, so there's a perfect example. Because I moved the 3D printer, uh, the bed height is at the completely wrong height, so I need to adjust the bed height and get it to uh, just the right height, otherwise you can see it's not adhering properly.
Okay guys, so now that it's uh, completely done, you really just want to wait for it to cool and it'll make it a lot easier, it'll just pop right off that build plate. Alright, so right off of the build plate, super easy. Peel off that little brim. And there is our part. And it looks okay. Um, there's some little issues here. Just cosmetic issues. This is exactly, uh, according to the software, it should be exactly the same size as this pipe. And of course that's no tolerance. So try and put the pipe in while well, it just doesn't fit. It's probably could fit if you jammed it in there. That may just break this part. So what we'll do is we'll just take this over to the lathe and machine this down. This could easily just be sanded. And the inside of this could just be sanded a little bit as well. All right, so we're shooting for a shape that looks something like this. And with copper, it uh, work hardens very quickly. So the problem with that is that you're gonna get cracking over at these corners here. So we need to anneal this, and in order to anneal copper, you need to heat it and dunk it into water real quick. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've got this nicely machined end, of course, and uh, you really don't want to mess with that. So I made a little uh, piece here that's going to reinforce that while I'm hammering on the other end. So all that's left to do is take a file outside and on the inside as well. So here's a small shop that goes. I kind of like this one for this type of work. It gets uh, it's a little less cumbersome. Well, how does it work? Um, well, it works pretty well. Actually, it did a really good job on the lathe here. So um, it would be nice to have a smaller tip, and I could easily just do that by removing this and having a, another one, or just reprint a whole other set. That would work pretty well also. Uh, now, one little design consideration, as I'm seeing, there's a bit of buildup in here of oil, and that is ABS might be susceptible to oil. So this may either need to be painted or to print in a different material that is not susceptible to oil. I don't know that it's going to cause much trouble at this point, uh, but if it does, anyway, I could just reprint another one in a different material. 
So if you guys want to print your own, the link will be in the description below. So check that out. And definitely if you enjoy this video and this type of content, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and like the video. I'd really appreciate that it. it helps us uh, continue to make these types of videos as well. And hopefully you enjoyed the video. Take care, everybody. See you on the next one. So this sketch looks terrible. Uh, hopefully we'll uh, be able to clean this up and 3D sketch a little bit and make it look nicer. And uh, But really, as far as the looks go, it's it's okay, but it's the functionality that's important. 